Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lead Up Lightworker podcast, empowering you with simple, practical, step by step spiritual tools and practices to follow your purpose and light up the world. You can access all episodes of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn, and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. For more videos and interviews all about finding and following your life purpose. My name is George Lizos. I'm a spiritual teacher, psychic killer, and the number one best-selling author of Be the Guru, Light Workers Gotta Work, and Protect Your Light. And today I have with me Emma Mumford. Emma Mumford is the UK's leading law of attraction expert. She's an award-winning life coach and mentor, law of attraction YouTuber, two times best-selling author of Positively Wealthy and Spiritual Queen, speaker and podcast host of the popular podcast spiritual queens badass podcast emma's work helps people turn their dream life into an abundant reality using the law of attraction and spirituality emma welcome back on the lid of lightworker podcast thank you for having me george i'm so excited to be here again I just love reading your bio just like lifted me up like hearing all those positive words and number one this and number one that I'm so excited to talk about your your third book that I read I reviewed and I'm so excited to chat about it hurt healing healed now before we get started before we talk all about the book and the journey to to healing essentially I want to hear a little bit about your story uh for writing this book like what drew you to write a book about healing many people would say this would be a departure from your uh, usual material which is like law of attraction specific so how is this different and is it different yeah good question and i think it's been a really interesting journey over the last gosh like i would say like six years since i spiritually awakened but specifically the last three years i would say have really influenced this book so I it's strange because I I knew the book would be on love and it was the book that I wanted to write first but spiritual queen and positively wealthy has come through first and it is still a book on love but the themes really changed and evolved as the book came through which was really great to see so it is still massively law of attraction and manifestation based because it's me why like I'm never leaving that I'm never going away from that but what I found is when I went through my positively wealthy journey back in like 2018 2019 and then the book came out in 2020 I really found that all these limiting beliefs and fears and this trauma came up from especially when lockdown hit so March 2020 as soon as April came along bam inner child work came up bam trauma work came up limiting beliefs it was like inner work central and I just really didn't have the toolkit at that time to to really tackle this or think you know I was manifesting all these incredible things and I thought how on earth do I have all this work underneath all this trauma? Like where on earth has this come from? Like, obviously I'm 28 and I'd never known throughout my life that any of this was even there. Like I kind of did obviously looking back, but consciously at the time I was like, what? Like how, like I'm doing all this positive work. I'm doing the law of attraction. Like why are these things coming up? I thought I'd work through this. So lockdown was a big, big, um, I guess, catalyst for this. And I started writing the book in May of 2020. And that two year period that it took me to write the book was the biggest, I would say, two year period of my life. Like George, you were with me on that journey. I remember voice noting you and talking to you about this book when I was literally right at those beginning stages. And most of you won't know, George actually channeled the name of the book. And I was like, oh my God, yes, that's it. So always eternally grateful for the, for you on this journey as well. But for me, it was really a case of uncovering the, the layers that were stopping me from truly living the life that I wanted to. And I feel like with Positively Wealthy and with all my work, I was hitting all these massive milestones and successes, but I still wasn't quite getting really my true version of wealth. So after my last relationship breakdown in 2020, it was really that case where I was like, I can't ignore this anymore. Like it's brought up all this inner work and I need to deal with it. So I went on a journey of literally trying so many different modalities, field testing, going out and learning what it meant to be hurt, healing and healed and learning what it took to release limiting beliefs and fears and blocks to supercharge my manifestations 
and come into true alignment with myself. So it's definitely a work, a shadow work book. It's definitely an inner work book. It's definitely, uh, I think, something that everybody needs with the law of attraction because every single human being has fears, has limiting beliefs, maybe even trauma. We all have it. And all of these things are impacting our manifestation results and what we're attracting into our life. And I just felt like even when I was... Um, <clears throat> going through this process, I would type in on Google books on limiting beliefs and fears, nothing would come up. And I was like, what? Like everybody talks about this. And there was nothing either. It was very, it was very psychology based books or in a child workbooks, which I love reading, but it's very academic. And I wanted something really spiritual and you know, kind of law of attraction focused. So that's when I decided that I would write the, that very book. So for me, it's really been a case of bringing that conversation into the law of attraction sphere, because it's not there in old school teachings. You know, the belief step is there of oh just believe you're worthy believe you're deserving but how do we actually embody that if we have very human very normal beliefs there which stop us from feeling worthy or stop us from receiving that desire etc how do we work through that so that's really what the book does it gives you that practical guide to literally how do I uncover these how do I release these and how do I move forward to actually getting my big results and the desires you want I love that you're talking about limiting beliefs and the law of attraction because I feel that the reason I'm not a lot into the law of attraction anymore as I was in the past, I'm into manifestation, but not specifically around the law of attraction is because sometimes I felt in the law of attraction community in general, people were like, ignore your limiting beliefs, ignore your fears, just like spiritually bypass everything and just think about what you want. And as we both know, it doesn't work this way. You have to be willing to delve into the darkness to eventually find the light and manifest something. So let's talk a little bit more about the importance of doing the inner work when manifesting. And the fear most people have in that school of thought is, ooh, what if by doing the inner work, I lower my vibration and then I start manifesting bad things in my life? So how are you addressing this in the book? Mm, and it's such a great conversation because you're right, it's really not addressed. And I definitely felt so much... I guess sadness is the word when I was going through my manifestation journey, because I guess like I was constantly told, like, don't think about that thought, just, you know, push it down, cancel it out. Don't think bad thoughts because bad things will happen. And it's very much that school of thought, like you say, of if you think bad things, bad things are going to happen. But that... <laughs> If we lived in that world, the world would be very chaotic, right? Like we have between, I think it's like 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. If every single one of them manifested, then wow, like I'm pretty sure the world wouldn't exist. We'd all be like killed off. So it's just, it just doesn't work like that. It's all about energy. And I really feel like my work's really evolved into the energetics of alignment and also it's your consistent energy and vibration that manifests your reality. So yes, if you have a deep rooted trauma that you haven't dealt with from your childhood, yeah, of course, that's gonna be impacting your results here as an adult because we need to uncover that, you need to release that. But say for instance, you're having a crappy day and something's really annoyed you and peed you off, voicing that or even just honoring that is not a negative thing at all. We have to feel to heal, feeling is healing, right? So when we allow ourselves to feel and we honor where we're we're at we're able to move up that emotional scale as Esther and Jerry Hicks call it so much quicker and more stably rather than this up and down oh, I'm high I'm low I'm high I'm low it's you know chaotic energy so really I always describe it like a radio frequency of you're on one station and your desires on the other station and it's just simply aligning that simply tweaking it so you're on the same wavelength so with the inner work it definitely requires that feminine energy. You know, we have our divine masculine and divine feminine energy. It obviously it requires us to go within and slow down and obviously do that work. But I found from obviously six years of my own data and obviously working with clients, the deeper I've gone with the work, the bigger the results in my own life and my clients too. I see it all the time, but I you know, obviously have firsthand experience of my own life. And for me, I found that, yes, okay, sometimes it's maybe taken me a bit more energy to sit with something or maybe it has felt a little bit upsetting, but it soon passes when I show up and I use the tools and I use the modalities and I process it in the right way. A week down the line, I'm like, actually, wow, I feel really clear now. I feel so much lighter. So 
depending on what it is obviously that's quite an extreme example but when we honor our emotions and we honor where we're at that's good law of attraction because if we're suppressing and storing all these things you can just imagine it like a jar of like festering energy like that is literally vibrating out of your auric field and your energy so you are attracting that whereas when you take that lid off and you let it out and process it you will authentically move up in vibration. You will have an authentic vibration because you're allowing yourself to naturally release and naturally come back at your own rate. So definitely it falls into that toxic positivity conversation. I don't personally believe toxic positivity exists. There's either positivity or there's not, but it's a great way to actually define it. And it's a great way to explain it where there is this kind of notion, especially with law of attraction. And it's the number one question I get asked of, you know, what happens if I think about this thought or Emma, I'm scared to go and, you know, process that or face it head on because what happens if it manifests? This is just our fear. And we have to remember that the universe has our back and not everything we fear I mean think it's a great explanation think back to every single thought you've had in your life you know that worry of you're not going to pass your test or that worry of something bad is going to happen or you're worried that someone's going to have that awkward conversation with you nine times out of ten doesn't happen does it so it's only you know we psych ourselves up with it we are the ones who torment ourselves with that fear and yes there could be some real based evidence in your past of something happening and that's where the fear is coming from definitely of course but it's about realizing that the universe has your back and that you are the creator of your life as well so by processing processing and honoring you're releasing it's creating that clear energy to magnetize you to your desires because when we have those fears those blocks that trauma whatever it is it's almost like going through a forest and you're trying to see through the hedges see you can't quite get there there's kind of blocks on the path whereas when you do the inner work which is in step to believe you're really clearing that path so you have a clear path forward and I always find that when you do the inner work it's so much quicker to that end goal you just feel so in alignment because you're aligning with the version of yourself who has your desire Yes, because the traumas, the fears, the limiting beliefs, if we don't really uh, see them and work through them and resolve them, they're still part of our energy. So suppressing them only makes them stronger and lets them keep on affecting our vibrational attraction. And I love what you talked about when you mentioned consistency. It is our consistent vibrational frequency that attracts something into our life rather than the period of time we're going to use to do the inner work. And that releasing and that shift of the vibration just completely shifts everything about our manifestation game. And what I loved uh, when I, while I was reading Hurt, Healing, Healed is that it's not a heavy book. You keep it light, but at the same time, real and deep at the same time. So I feel it's an it's an easy read for people who are scared about doing the inner work, but are willing to like do it. And it's like you're, you're, you're holding them by the hand and taking them step by step. You have this beautiful structure of hurt, healing, healed. So let's talk about this journey and how can people um, trust you on the journey to uh, working through their limiting beliefs and therefore manifesting their best life. So... Part one, which is all about hurt. How do we take care of ourselves while hurting and while going through this journey of everything is coming up and I don't know how to handle it and I'm feeling triggered? How do I take care of myself so that I don't get scared and run away from it? Mm, and it's so common it's so common to do like even me in the beginning like I definitely would have been like that as well 100% and I always think the inner work should be fun as well it doesn't have to be all like doom and gloom and all inner work like there's such a great practice of having fun with the inner work as well of course not everything is going to be fun and enjoyable like that's just polarity that's life but in the first section of her obviously I walk you through the exact steps of how we identify that how you support yourself and how we move to that place of healing once you've identified what needs healing so really the best thing you can do in that stage if you're even before you've picked up the book if you're identifying that maybe you feel a bit rageful or angry or maybe you're quite hot-headed or maybe that you feel sadness or 
any type of negative emotion, then identify this and sit with, okay, what, what, when does this normally come up? What triggers this off? When do I start to feel that emotion? And then what you can do is obviously use the practices in the book to work with that, to really identify where it's come from, when it started and what it, the core belief actually is. But the best way to support yourself is absolutely with a daily practice, absolutely with self-care and self-love because it's a necessity whenever a client comes to me and we're working with the inner work or the beliefs a hundred percent of the time I always look at the daily practice first how are they supporting themselves what are they doing day to day so having a good solid daily practice is great because it really helps to lift you as we know by having one doing a gratitude practice or whatever you choose to do um, can really help just make you feel great in the morning so by having that consistently you're able you're keeping yourself at that steady emotional rate on the scale you're not sort of like feeling those low and going deeper into it you know you're bringing yourself back up so I really feel and like even on my own journey having a solid daily practice gratitude routine and making sure I'm nurturing myself each week is just absolutely key and lots of fun too because you get to have lots of fun and I just think as well if you are feeling that heaviness from it um take a break you know you can always come back to it again maybe watch a funny movie go and ground in nature like I think uh I mean George have definitely had this conversation before about being a bit addicted to the inner works sometimes and being like right I must work through this now something's come up and if you genuinely feel called to do that great obviously the book will guide you through that but take it at your own pace May, you know everything in the book is extremely manageable and extremely like light like George said but deep and from the test readers who have read the book now because I really wanted to test it and say right this is the process that works for me this is what feels good to me but how does it actually translate in the world with like a whole different array of people the same thing kept coming through of like they got these huge results, these huge transformations, but they actually had lots of fun doing it as well. So that I feel is so important of like, keep the fun there, look after yourself, nurture yourself. And, you know, you will feel naturally supported and lifted. Yeah, because the fun and the spiritual practice, as you said, they maintain a certain level of vibrational frequency so that we can go down into the deep, dark corners of our psyche and deal with a trauma that, or a conditioning that comes up. But at the same time, because we've had our spiritual practice in the morning, that can maintain our vibration high or can allow us to bounce right back where we are. Such an important practice. And then after we go through the mucky stuff of, of, of hurting and, and guiding ourselves through, and I love that you talked about being mindful of our triggers and being curious essentially about what's coming up so we can see them and start healing them, we go into the healing process, the healing part of the book. So what is the mindset we need to have around healing? I know you have many different practices that you share in the book, and maybe you can share one of those practices or give us like a tease, but what is the mindset we should have when we go into the healing journey? An open mind, definitely. An open mind and an open heart. And I think as well, like the healing stage is very like a, almost like a chrysalis of a butterfly of like, you kind of go in the chrysalis, you're kind of like feeling a bit like, what's gonna happen? What results am I gonna get? Is this actually gonna work? Um, you know, and I think the, the number one thing I hear all the time is, um, and I literally had this from a client the other day, they've been in that place for so long with that fear, that anxiety, that trauma or that belief that they almost, and I definitely felt this when I did the inner work of like, is it actually possible to not feel this? Is it actually possible to not feel anxiety again? And from someone who's had depression, who's had anxiety, like absolutely it is possible. So when you are in that chrysalis, you are kind of taking a leap of faith and it does feel like that. And the butterfly does as well. The butterfly is like, whoa, what's happening here? It's all gone dark, I'm transforming, I'm shedding what's happening. So you do really shed a layer. You shed your skins, you shed the layers that you, you know we've been carrying for years, decades even, which we don't need to. So a practice where, well, obviously there's a whole array of different things in there because I really want to keep it... Um, not just on one modality, but actually cover a lot of modalities that have helped myself and that really do work. So alignment is what we create in the healing chapter in the sex chapter section. There's lots of chapters in that section. So alignment is really key with this to then move into that healed place. So really it's looking at, I once we've identified it, how do we work through that? How do we really set? And there's loads of great tools because not all modalities suit everybody. Not all modalities feel right to everybody. I know that 
that inner child work is absolutely the most powerful one. But a lot of people are like, Emma, no, I do not want to talk to my inner child. I do not want to go there. And if it feels quite triggering you, to, triggering to even hear me talk about that and think inner child work, hell no. It's normally the one you need to work with the most. That's what I found in life when I'm really resistant to something or I'm like, oh, hell no. Um, that's normally the one that's going to get me the biggest results <laughs> that I need to work with. Um, I remember having that experience with mermaids, for example, and George said to me, Emma, you need to work with them. And I was like, no, George, no. And then I did. And it was the best thing that happened. So normally we can feel a bit of resistance as well. That does come from the inner child. So inner child work is fantastic. Um, and if you don't know what that is, we all have a little version of ourselves stored in our subconscious and our psyche, and it stays with us throughout our lifetime. So I personally believe that the inner critic and the ego is our inner child. So that nagging little voice in your head that tells you you're not enough, that tells you you shouldn't be doing this or imposter syndrome or anything all comes from that little child within us. So when we start to acknowledge our inner child, when we start to work with our inner child, Honestly, miracles happen. Not only do we experience more fun in our adult life and more joy in life in general, we also start to heal and do that inner work as well. So the inner child is kind of weaved and echoed throughout the book anyway, just because it's a great analogy of how we actually get limiting beliefs and fears and trauma anyway. So it kind of all weaves in nicely, but there's some great practices with your chakras. Aligning your chakras is really important as well and clearing any blockages from them. There's obviously a whole array of different spiritual manifestation tools as well. Um, working with polarity energy so actually a lot of the seven laws of the universe are incorporated into this book and into the process as well so there's definitely something for everybody in there lots of fun journaling exercises meditations um, and energy clearing exercises so it's definitely in that stage a case of like see what fits try these out see what feels good and see what results you get from them I love that. And I love the analogy of the chrysalis because that's exactly how it feels. Everything is breaking down. The old you is breaking down, allowing and creating space for the new butterfly that will be you to emerge. And I think when we acknowledge that, when we acknowledge that it's going to be messy and it's going to be unpredictable and we won't be able to control everything and accept that, it makes the healing journey easier because we know that we're not supposed to know everything. <laughs> so it allows us and gives us the, the opportunity to learn and to grow and to change and transform. And then after we heal, then the third part is healed. And I have a two-sided question here. Firstly, are we ever fully healed? And secondly, when we have healed enough, how, how can we take our healed self and evolve it? Great questions. So are we ever truly healed? I wish I knew the answer to that, George. I don't think any person on this earth ever knows that. No is my answer because we can obviously work through childhood blocks, childhood beliefs, childhood fears, definitely. But then as we do that, as I'm finding out now, as I'm going in 29 and nearly into my 30s, it's like there will be things along the way that comes up. And if we had, you know, obviously everybody can have this awareness and consciousness at different ages. Some people might awaken really early. Some people might awaken in their 50s or 60s. Some maybe not even at all in this lifetime. So I think it really depends upon your karmic contract your soul contracts what you, I guess you're destined here to come and learn so you know like for me if I'd learned all my life lessons and healed everything by the age of 28 well you know what, what am I going to do with the rest of my life obviously great things and positive things but you know we are here in the school of life so we're here to learn until our very last breath here on this planet so you know naturally we would have things come up naturally we would experience things maybe later in life as we go into different phases I'm sure as I go into the next phase of my life and maybe Maybe become a mother eventually there'll be new lessons and new things there to work with so I think it's always a case of it's always unraveling but you will reach a place where maybe you have six months a year where you're feeling great and you're moving back into that masculine energy you're seeing those manifestations come in and you're feeling great life's great and you've like reached this new level as such because you have worked through that and then maybe a year down the line couple years down the line whatever something else might come up and then it's time to pick up that book and work through it again so it's never a case of like it's going to be constant or you're constantly going to be in this phase because you know that also wouldn't be too fun but it's a case of just witnessing when you're in that summer season of celebrating and enjoying and manifesting and doing and when maybe you need to come back into that little feminine space and you know 
take a step back, rest, recoup, recharge. Some things maybe feel really potent. Some things could be, you know, minuscule things to work on and just your favorite practice could really help you with that. So really the book is giving you those tools. It adds those tools and modalities to your spiritual toolkit so that when those things do come up, no matter when in your life, you are equipped and you know how to work with things and you're able to have the awareness and knowledge of, okay, this is what's coming up right so healing is like an onion you peel away the layers so you could work on a limiting belief and have fantastic results with it and then six months time it comes up again you think what it hasn't healed like I did all that work I did all this stuff like ever it hasn't worked when it has worked it's just the layers that are unraveling and unpeeling so each time that it may come up and there's no set rule or time with that everybody's different it may feel less intense so I always say don't judge the thoughts judge the comeback rate because the thoughts can and probably still will be there but it's actually how you respond to them it's your comeback rate and how you then associate to them afterwards so if you can think about that really triggering memory from school six months later and you're like actually I feel peace with that like you know I wish them well I feel peace you've done the work. So it's really about how you then feel about the memory or feel about the situation or feel about the belief or yourself, for example, and then you'll come back great from that. So yes, life happens, things will come up, of course, but it's knowing how to deal with them and also using these tools to help supercharge your manifestation. Because again, it can feel like, okay, how does this really like tie into manifestation? But it all does because it's our energy and it's our vibration. So having this awareness, having these tools, really helps you to then say right if I'm not getting the result I want if I'm not there yet I'm not living my best life I'm not quite in that frequency yet what is blocking me right let's go in and let's find it so it's almost like um Ha like biohacking it's almost like a little um cheat sheet that you can have as such to say right okay if that's not if that's not appearing in my reality what is going on in the subconscious what is going on in the inner world and I really found that that when the inner world reflected what I wanted to experience it was like a magnet the desires I'd wanted for years suddenly just all came in at once because I'd hit that place of alignment I'd work through that block so you can see shifts and manifestations really really quickly it doesn't take long at all because as soon as you align to it that's it you're an energetic match so yes there could be some divine timing there of course but I have found from my own experience that as soon as I'm in that mindset as soon as I'm in that frequency it's really really quick and you can like, often like shock yourself and be like wow I literally worked through that thing and wow like that's appeared straight away and I've waited years for that so I like I said before the deeper I've gone with the work the bigger the results so there's only positive stuff that can come from this and um I've totally forgotten your second question George <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, don't worry. I'm getting back to the album just so like entranced. I loved the 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 idea of a comeback great. Essentially, it's like noticing, okay, I used to be like tortured by this thought every single day, and now I'm just thinking about it like once in a while, and I have completely different, a completely different emotional response to it. That means boom, I've healed to a great degree. And maybe, yes, something deeper may be triggered around that same limiting belief. But as you said, there are different layers to it and there are different uh, dimensionalities to it that you need, we need to address and keep on healing. And I love that you've created this manual that people can use and keep going back to, to essentially troubleshoot what they're going through and keep on manifesting more and more and more. So the second question had to do with let's say we've healed a lot. How do we take our amplified aligned vibrational frequency and elevate it? What do we do with it? What do we do with a vibration after it healed? Yeah, so this is when we move into the healed stage, essentially. So really, it's about understanding then as we've returned back to that unconditional love within ourselves, um, and we've done that work, then how do, like you say, how do we take it then into the world? How do we then represent that or reflect that onto our manifestations? So there is a chapter in the book called Aligned Manifesting, where you then come from that space of, okay, now here, who are you? Let's meet the new you. Because if you don't know who you're, who you are, then how can you expect to become that version of yourself who has your desires? So this is the alignment stage. We've worked to that alignment. And then it's knowing the, who the true authentic version of yourself is outside of trauma or fears or beliefs, because that is a process. I've had it myself where I had trauma from my childhood. And then I had to meet myself all over again, because for literally like 80% of my life, 
I've operated from that space. So I've only ever known this version of myself. So it's a really fun process meeting the new version of yourself without that fear, without that block, without that trauma, because then you get to meet the real you and you get to meet that up leveled version of yourself, this kind of like 2.0 version of yourself. So once you've met yourself and you are expressing that true authentic self, then you look at, okay, what feels in alignment to me here and now? Because I guarantee what felt in alignment in that healing stage or hurt stage may not always feel in alignment in the healed stage. So then you can start manifesting with the tools I've put in the book from this supercharged place of this aligned energy and frequency rather than this sort of like lower frequency that's kind of like, I want this, but is this actually what I want? So I found that over the time, you know, my desires and wants had changed. Absolutely. And I thought, oh, crap, well, I've asked for this. So what's going to happen now? But, you know, the universe always knew that that up leveled version of myself would want that new thing. So obviously you can re-manifest, you can set new intentions, like there's no rules against that. Definitely. But I found from coming from that aligned space and setting those intentions, they happen so much easier, so much quicker and feel so much more powerful because you feel in that flow. And when you're in that flow state, like you just honestly, you feel freaking amazing. Um, so again, that's not to say you won't have bad days. That's not to say you won't feel, you know, the human experience moving forwards, but it allows you to have that comeback rate, as we've said, where you can move stably up that emotional scale and have that consistent vibration. And then maybe if you need that little bit of extra support, you've got the tools um, and necessary stuff to do so. So really in that healed stage, it's about moving forwards and releasing the identities that maybe you've had from those fears, those beliefs, stepping into your new authentic true self and then aligning, well, you will have aligned with your desires, but then really owning that and saying this is who I am now and um yeah you'll be shocked how quick how quick things happen <laughs> yes it's so amazing when our desires are aligning with our soul's desires for us because sometimes they're different sometimes we're when we are um functioning out of our ego's desires or out of our conditioning and our trauma our desires are not really coming from that deep state of connectedness so when we do the inner work and we heal and we strip away those layers then we start manifesting from our soul's perspective and it's just so much easier as you said and so much more powerful and enjoyable so finally emma i would like to hear your hope for people picking up this book so i'm someone who wants to do the inner work i pick up this book what is your hope for me? Lovely question. I would love everybody to manifest their dreams from this book because this is the book that I really, really needed three years ago and it didn't exist. And if I'd had this book, then I would have like literally like gone through that process so much quicker but everybody's journey unfolds as it's meant to and obviously I was meant to go on this journey to be able to write this book so my wish for people is that they receive the healing that they've always wanted or maybe they don't even know that maybe there is something there but they have that desire or they have that want to to do better or to feel better or to achieve whatever it is they want to and they don't know how to or they don't know what's blocking them so Obviously, the book's about unconditional love with yourself <clears throat> and coming back to yourself, um, coming home to yourself, being friends with your inner child and experiencing unconditional love again. So really the wish is for unconditional love, because when we come from that place of peace, when we come from a place of joy, when we come from a place of unconditional love, anything in this world is possible. You don't even have to think about manifesting because your vibration, your energy, you will just magnetize all those things you want to. And I always say, if you want the biggest secret to the law of attraction, it is focus on the inner world, come from a place of peace, joy, and unconditional love, and anything in this world will be yours. You don't have to worry about anything. So my biggest wish is for people to come back home to themselves, experience unconditional love, and manifest their dreams. How beautiful. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for coming onto the podcast and sharing your wisdom and the magic of Hurt Healing Healed. And I'm so excited for everyone to read the book. Can you please let everyone know where they can get the book from and where they can get in touch with you? Of course. And thank you so much, George, for having me on again. It's always a joy to be here with you. So um, yes, you can find me at I am Emma Mumford over on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all the social media channels. My website is emmamumford.co.uk. The book Hurt Healing Healed is out on the 11th of October 2022. So pre-order is up now and you can get audiobook, ebook, paperbook, 
paper book, paperback, whatever you would prefer um, to read or listen to. And you can get it from anywhere worldwide that sells books. So Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Waterstones, all your regular book places. And all the links are in the show notes below. Emma, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. Thank you, George. <laughs>